We're going to explore even more your personal story. It's so amazing to have a group where we can reinforce our neurons, public mm. speaking neurons, because we need that to keep developing our public speaking. My focus of the program here is for my company and to be able to speak, uh, to use the skills of speaking for presentation for uh, like for videos and for clients. So how was it for you? Because Magnus did the exercise. I recorded first my intention. It's like, it was mainly for me, maybe. Okay, I'm doing this. I was setting the frame and uh, I posted uh, the video with the frame and then the story. And then based on your uh, advice, Ricardo, I removed the frame. So I said, okay, now I can. <laughs> but it was difficult to say, I could not. Uh, like send the story straight away. It was a bit, uh, I felt, oh, yeah. it's a bit empty, but but uh, you, you received it uh, well, but it carried itself. I, I didn't trust that it would carry well, itself. How, yeah. how do you feel? You know, let, let me create a context here so we all get this, this lesson. It's an important lesson for all of us speakers. Magnus did his exercise and in the beginning of the his video, he was kind of, you know, telling us what he was going to tell us. You know, guys, I'm here to do a video about my pixelar uh, pics. That, but Magnus, this is something that's really common of uh, speakers doing. Uh -huh. You know, somebody go to the stage and they always say, you know, guys, I'm here to tell you what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. So you don't need to pay attention to actually uh, what I'm going to say. Because when you tell us what you're going to tell us, it's already disengage us so so that's why i suggested you and i thought it got a lot more engaging you know mm -hmm. so this is an exercise for us in any place that we go even if you're doing a, a instagram video you already start talking boom, and never uh, apologizing also oh guys i'm here to talk to you and i know it's gonna take some time or never telling us also yes guys i, I want to tell you a story today no no start already telling the story so I think this is a lesson for all of us and took this lesson took me many years to learn, you know, because I was also doing the same, explaining what I was going to talk about. It will make already us uh, in a higher level than other speakers, because most people do that. U.S., when you are given uh, public speaking or presentation skills at uh, companies, well, you are you are told to first start to tell people what you're going to tell them, then you tell them and then you finish off by telling them what you told them. It's like <laughs> this is like the, the, this is like a really old uh, formula. You, that, yeah, that maybe you're, you're gonna hear like uh, public speaking teachers that has like seventy years old saying that, mm -hmm. or somebody that learned with them. It's it's old way. I understand. But I think a lot of Americans are doing that because in corporate environment, you listen to an American speaker, they do that. It's like, uh, but but the Europeans don't tend to do that. They tell because the it's a, it's a culture thing. I think also. Regardless of the culture, I think that engagement wise, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, our goal is to speak to inspire. That is a quote from Tony Robbins that says, people are rewarded in public for what they have been practicing in privacy. And I think that's so powerful that all that we are doing here is actually practicing privacy. So when we go to the field, we're going to be rewarded. And people are like, fuck, you know, Sebastian's really good. Magnus really good. I mean, Atta's really good. And I say that to you because yesterday, I was invited to a podcast here in Brazil. It was like maybe three years ago. I would be a little bit nervous. I like to speak and have a structure when I speak. Why I want to have a structure? Because I use more the opportunity. How many people get a, a TV interview and they go there and they, when the person put the microphone in their face, they're like saying nothing with nothing. And they're like, fuck. And then when they finish the interview, they say, fuck, I should have said that. Mm -hmm. The same thing is in a podcast, is an interview or, or a job interview, an opportunity you will have to speak in your company. By practicing privacy, when you are in public, you will be able to make it easy. So yes, uh, Monday I went to, a, to, a, to this interview in a podcast and it was like, you know, 10 minutes before I was structuring what I want to say because I already have practiced so many times that I just put, okay, I'm going to tell three stories. I want the interview to be interviewed by me. You see the difference? When you practice so much, when somebody gonna interview you, you gonna be interviewing them and they're gonna think they're interviewing you. You know what I mean? 
So you lead the conversation and then you 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 bring the content for the direction you want. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the, this practice is so great. So next exercise, I hope everybody will, will do it. The thing you are talking about is something that uh, very skillful lawyers always talk about, that if you want to win in court, you need to be the master of the narrative. Yes, like exactly. you, you need to be the master of the story. Don't buy the story of the prosecutor, but tell them your own uh, story about what has happened. And you know, and that goes for the modern times in uh, social media, podcasts, whatever we go, we can you know dominate the narrative and and, and say what we want to say. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the power of storytelling. I don't know if you heard about the story of uh, uh, Rob Walker. The Rob Walker experiment. He saw somebody selling the jacket of Michael Jackson. You know this red jacket, jacket of Michael Jackson. You know the guy saw that they sold this jacket, like a simple jacket that that could be buy in uh, Mirona. Is it Mirona the store in Sweden? Mirona, Mirona. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. They could buy that, that, that jacket in in, in Mirona for thirty dollars. And they were selling the Michael Jackson jacket for almost one million dollars. I'm sure that the only thing that made people pay that was the story that was told. It's Michael Jackson that has a story behind the jacket. And then he decided to make an experiment. So he went to eBay. Okay, he went to eBay and he bought 200 items. 200 items of one dollar each. Crazy shit. Like he bought like a banana plastic, you know, a banana plastic. A uh, 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 horse head, things like like crazy things. One dollar, and then he hired storytellers to write a story about those things, and then he put to sell. He bought for one dollar, and he sold for almost sixty-eight dollars each. He spent almost two hundred dollars with uh, material, two with two hundred one dollar material, and he sold this after the stories for eight thousand dollars. Okay, and then they analyze what made them sell. You know, they, they got this uh, horse head and they start to create a story saying, you know, the horse head was in the castle in France and the, 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 the old king of France was using these in, in its table, dinner table, and, and, and it was all bullshit. It was not even true. They wrote that, put that, and they discover that. What made it sell was the power of storytelling. How powerful is that? How can we, how we as a speaker cannot be actually studying storytelling all the time, okay? And, and practicing stories all the time. I would like you to start seeing stories. You see stories in your life. That's my goal of, it, of this speaker here today, okay? We need to start seeing stories in our, in, our life, in our lives because sometimes we believe we have only one story, like the valley story, okay? Oh, you know, I passed for a hard time. But we, we, have, we have many stories. So today we are, we're going we're gonna to do two exercises here. First, we're going to do the finding stories exercise. If I would ask you here, uh, uh, how is it for you to find these stories? In your life, uh, Magnum. The right with the right person, I can tell many stories. I had that experience uh, the past week. There was one guy, a young guy from uh, Canada. He stayed here uh, in. I'm pointing here, but in, in the room that I rent to Airbnb. We had a fantastic time, and we shared so many stories. Uh, but he was interested. He was curious. He was intelligent. He knew. wow. Then I come alive. I can tell many stories. Many times you forget what's going on until something outside happens that, oh, this is can, kind of connected to this thing. Or when someone speaks of something, you're like, oh, shit, I totally forgot about this time when blah, blah, blah. So when it comes into sort of like what Magna said, when you're in this curiosity flow, then it happens a bit more naturally and easily. I had a big family dinner this last month with, uh, you know, cousins, brother, sister, everything, and a lot of people. And then we started exchanging stories about the families, things that have happened. 
and people try to you know be more funny than the other one and everybody's laughing and that's a, that's an environment where also like magnus said you can get inspired to talk but i i feel it's um, it's a bit hard to find those stories and this is part of the training we're doing i mean to to be able to really see those stories and lift them like it, when you don't have self confidence enough it becomes uh, the stories can become a little bit boring i don't know how to put it perfect perfect i love your all, all, all your examples why because this is actually what happened in our lives you know you see sebastian you're saying like oh sometimes something really cool is happening and you're like oh my god it has emotion it has a a, mm. a, a lesson but we usually let that go and then uh, uh, the same with you Aminata. you are in the table with your family and then suddenly you're telling your story that has emotion that has a teaching behind and we take for granted you know the same with you magnus you're having a conversation with with your airbnb friend and suddenly you are seeing a beautiful story why i'm saying all of that because in these moments it's where we start creating our is archive of stories i'm saying that we get that to using our speaking engagements so we have our own private stories that are unique or we're gonna have to do what many speakers do that's like they're copying stories to tell you know so anything in our life can become a story so we can use in our engagement that's what i'm trying to say for example my car broke i said that you know can you give me the telephone of this these people i'm gonna put my car there because they know you and then he said yes okay go there you know but talk to the guy because the guy's a little bit confused if you don't explain exactly what to do he will not do the work and i'm like okay okay i, I was thinking you know ah uh, you know these old people they okay I, I will listen to you and then i went there and then i, I left the car and i saw the guys and then i didn't tell the guy what i supposed to do you know and then i met my dad my dad so you know so what's up did you left your car there to fix and then i said yes i left my car there, my car there and you know, i i went to fix the car but my tire was also uh, uh, flat and i imagine that just because i told the guy fast you know you know man my flat tire uh you change it and he would do the change and then my my dad asked me so so you know uh, did you talk to the guy and told him to change your tire flat? And I said, yeah, I told him really fast. And my dad said, you know, call him. He's going to forget. And I'm like, you know, my dad's like, you, what the fuck? I, I know more than you, you know, I, I know how to deal with people. You know, I, I didn't told him that. I just thought, I said, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, passed the day. And then I went to grab my car. I came to get the car. I was like, fucking, it's going to be fast. My car is ready. When I come there, the tire was not done. You know what I mean? My tire was not done. And then my dad sent a message to me. So what's up? How is uh -huh. your car? <laughs> How is your car? And then I said to him, yeah, you know, fuck. They, they fix everything, in, but they didn't change the tire. And then he only answered like this. He just sent a message like this. Yeah, you know, old people know things. And then I was like, fuck. You know, for me, I just answer him back. Yeah, yeah. You know, old people really know, really know things. You know, and then I got like the lesson. You know, so I'm saying that to you. And if I ask you, Sebastian, Magnus, Aminata, which lesson do you feel in your world from this story? Too many, to be honest. <laughs> Ooh, but but share all, share all if you can. I mean, I've gotten in too much trouble in my a lot of it has happened with injuries or getting uh, told off for doing something that you thought wasn't that stupid but then when you look back you're like okay yeah that was stupid like first use in general that's like when i have been a little bit proud or like oh i got this and and uh, like or ignorant and then it's like like and i'm like okay okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry you know like used to be humble because it's so easy sometimes, like, for an example, in my company, I get a lot of self-esteem, business is coming in. I'm like, oh, I got this. And I, I start to be a little bit ignorant. And then life is, 
and and I kind of like fuck. I lo I lost my humbleness, and it's maybe not something I do, but just the attitude I maybe have, like where I really appreciating where I, you know, it also reminded me about the opposite. It's, for example, in my company, I have also had a tendency to listen to especially guys that talks very technical because I work with a technical field and I'm often the only woman and often I lead maybe men in my team that is like under because I have hired them in but sometimes I listen more to them sometimes it's because they are men and it's about something technical and they're like always what but then I realize what's always happened they say these words and they're like no because of this and that and and they and I'm like oh that sounds complicated I was like yeah yeah but you do and then I trust them just because they talk a lot but then I'm like then they always mess up and in the end I need to go and fix it and and I always get surprised that how, how can I fix it when you talk so complex and I know how to fix it I don't know the, the right words but I know how to fix it so it also remind me about the opposite kind of. So that, that, that's one thing I think that that's what we're talking about storytelling. Look at the power. You know, I chose one story from my reality, and and you could use that story to tell exactly what you just said, Christina. You could use that story to take to any direction of what you want to express in the world to give a meaning because we never tell a story. We never tell a story without a point. So from a story, you can find many points to, 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 to develop what you want to say, okay? So for, for you, Aminata, what, what lessons could you get from private or no? Maybe you didn't got any. You don't have to get, you understand? But maybe you didn't. I thought to myself that, yeah, always check yourself. When you say to yourself that, I got this, check yourself more than once <laughs> because it's so easy just like christina said to become proud that i know what i'm doing and so on like i did I know yeah. what i'm talking and then yeah. suddenly words are jumping out of your mouth and you are like i didn't check myself i told i said something that i was not supposed to say that's okay. what up in my mind i'm trying to show you also what i've done here because who was the hero of this story your dad it was not me, it was my dad, you know. So this is also a way, it's a technique of, of storytelling. I'm not lying, it's a true story, but when I take the story of me, I don't need to be the hero all the time, you know? You can you can create a story where somebody else is, is, is it's a hero and, and you're telling the message you're telling. So we can make other people heroes and we just give in a message and, and make easier for, for, uh, for us to engage our public. You know, because it's not an ego talk. So how about you, Magnus? Reminder that uh, usually people don't listen. They they don't take in what uh, yeah. you, you have you, so much in your world and you want to convey something. And no, sorry, they don't listen so much. But to get people to do things for you, that's shit hard. <laughs> I think your dad knew that, you know, especially maybe in Brazil. I don't know if it's different in other countries. Thanks a lot for sharing. So I would like to know also, what was the point of storytelling that you got from, from this small exercise? Quite intuitive. So I've been right most of my life, except for some things. But then I remember like, you know, I tell myself things like, oh, but assumptions become reality. I am the person who creates what is through my filters, my beliefs, my perception. If I just changed my assumption, I would not have been sad here. I would not have been disappointed here. I wouldn't have made this mistake here. And you're like, it's like you just look back at your past and like, nothing can hold me back now because that was how I thought of it now. The, the person I was before doesn't have to be here now, but the person here can see that he wasn't even that person before. Because you were you you get lost in your own assumptions and loops, and since we're so drawn to the negative, you're like, oh, I gotta be survival, kind of ego driven, but like a not like a a savior type. It's more like a oh protective type. So I was like, it really wakes you up, like shit. Listen to yourself, and don't forget the things when life comes in the way, because we will always be the the creation of what is and i was like Dah. so I have, I have another question for you how <laughs> can you use that in your speech storytelling how this this year 
can you use in your next presentation? I mean, life is like uh, a painting, you know, the beliefs and assumptions, they all draw the picture, but then everything when you just change how it looks, I mean, I can draw an amazing picture, but then, you know, I turn it around and it's a whole different thing. And I was kind of thinking of this when you were talking about that guy who's like, oh, I bought this pen for a dollar, but I sold it for a hundred. And I was like, I was really thinking like, shit, you know, some people, they can, they can sell you this with a dot. And it's like, you know what this dot represents? The creation of time and space itself. Like, oh, a hundred million for that. When in reality, it could have been a two-year-old who splashed a little bit of paint. It's all yeah. in their mind. And then I was like thinking like, shit, everything is just a story. I mean, people don't, it's like marketing, you know, you don't sell the drill, you, you sell the hole. You sell like the solution, not like, oh yeah, we can, we're selling you the vision of the house you can build. But in reality, you're going to have to pick up a bunch of stones, cut down all the trees and buy all the things. But it's like, it's how they see it. And if you can yeah. teach people to create the assumptions you need within their mind, then like Magnus said, you believe that it's hard to get someone to do what you want. If you change that, you can figure out, aha, uh -huh, wait, you know what? I say the right things to this person and they might do it better than I would have even thought that they could. Say Krishina, why? No, you were asking Sebastian how he could use this uh, realization of him in, in storytelling. And maybe, Ikaru, it was what you were thinking. But when, uh, Sebastian, you were talking, I was thinking like, wow, that's such a good way of storytelling. You kind of put your, your younger self as a character. Mm. And then you make a full, like, and then you divide to how the newer self would be thinking. So that's how I was thinking your question, Ikaru. Like, how can you use this in... In storytelling, yeah. I'm mean, a little bit more practical, you know. I, 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 I'm a little bit more practical because mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. We are all storytellers, and uh, my 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 intention here is to actually inspire you to apply the techniques when you are in the stage. So I, I'm 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 more not going to the subjectiveness of what we believe mm -hmm. it is, but more okay, okay, guys. So. How can we apply these techniques, you know, in the way, in the individual way as we can, you know, Sebastian in his way, I mean, in his way, Magno in his way. So my goal is like, cool, you know, okay, did, did, did we get the concept? Did, did we see that mm. the concept work as you're, as you're saying, Sebastian, the concept work, you know? Yeah. So how can we, how can we apply the concept in our next gig, in our next video? And we practice this concept because that's what we make us great public speakers that's why we are here no i like that because i just remembered like magnus said he filmed the intention of his video first because mm -hmm. that's also kind of like that sets you straight for what's about to come i mean the yeah. people don't actually need to see what you're setting yourself up to because it will come more naturally but so like what you said like we're priming ourselves to create the best speech yes what what do i want out of here how do i want people to leave how do i want them to feel yes, like you yes. you're like yes. it's not just about the actual speech or the value or the structure it's about when do what points am i hitting and what makes those points hit yes yes exactly perfect so guys i i have a challenge for you simple challenge that we're gonna do now yeah, and the challenge is simple. As I told you the story of my dad here, that what happened last week, our, our challenge is like, we're going to think about something that happening maybe today, earlier, or now, or last week, that we would never take that shit. This was a story. Observate our life, something that happened that generates some kind of lesson or some kind of emotion or some kind of challenge that would, would take for granted and that we're going to transform that in a story. You need to tell this story that you're going to find that happened in your life and you're going to make a point that is a lesson in the, in the, in the story. Like I did my, my dad's uh, story. There was a lesson there. Mm. And remember, we are practicing storytelling for a long time, public speaking. So it should be a, a beginning, should make sense. You, tr you have to try to apply all the techniques that we've been practicing, creating this story. Great storytellers, they can tell the same story in 10 minutes or in 
one minute. This is also an ability that we, we should have. So, so if you have one hour in a stage, you can take 10 minutes to tell one story. But if you have 10 minutes on a stage, you can take one minute to tell the same story. Okay? So let's try to apply different techniques. He grew up in his family's restaurant in Malaysia. His parents expected him to arrange a visa for them when they sent him off to study in Australia. The family had one vacation day per year. Many go to uh, Australia without a visa. And when Chile understood this, his parents didn't believe him. That was the only day or that was the only time his father ever spoke to him to declare his disappointment. A millionaire with a home in every continent and 11 children spread out from Sweden to Hong Kong expressed his loneliness in one sentence. One father can be enough for 11 children, but 11 children cannot be enough for only one father. Can I give feedback or what you think? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think this is better you get the feedback. Like, uh, I think that's okay. It's a good beginning for a story. But I think that, you know, when you're telling a story, you 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 should be a little bit more um, like as you're talking to a friend, you know, it, 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 you you are you are like more narrating something to us uh, to feel like you're telling a story. It's kind of like you would tell more like you're telling a story. You know, I met this guy. And I heard that, 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 that you know, in a, in a way that is more like a story. You understand the difference? Can you see the difference, guys, of what I'm saying? Okay. So I think the story has a big potential to be really interesting. But I think you're you're reading right something. Da, 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 da. Okay. So that's why. But anyway, good, great try. I, I read something that I had used put to some notes about. So the notes were a little bit crazy as well. Like okay, so it could be a great practice to transform that in a storytelling, yeah, you know, to make us feel the pain of the guy, you know? Let's go, Sebastian. Okay. Sometimes we look too deep and far that all we see is the, the darkness and the mess of what we're trying to create. You know, we can, we can uh, plan and place things as we wish, but if we plan everything so far ahead, five minutes, can gap up into a big thing you know everything accumulates and when you try and try and try too far ahead or thinking from the past all you will accumulate is nothing more than the mess you create in your mind and we're always looking for for the point of doing things we're procrastinating we don't we don't always find the reason within the actual moment of now and when you actually sit back and think of all the achievements you have come up to now, you, you see that the point isn't always to, to stand on top of the mountain. It's to walk up to the mountain, the journey of pushing there, the, the excitement of seeing what's on the top. What will the weather be? How, how will it become? Will it be as I plan? And many times when, when you sit and think the thought never actually comes to you because you're thinking of what am i going to do what's going to happen what could happen but in reality you just have to do it the point is to be here and do it now because you are the only distraction you are the only you are the only limit so you just you you are the point you are the reason to do what you wish to do and enjoy the journey Instead of just pushing and pushing and pushing towards something that you don't even see a point in doing. Enjoy the moment. Okay, cool. My feedback for you, I think that I, I think this this was different than telling a story. Okay. Mm. There was a message. I think that yeah. you got like an intuition. Uh, uh, you have your intuition, your connection mm. really well uh, uh, aligned. And then you send, you know, so I feel that more as, you know, if we would grab a telephone and do like a live to send a message to what you're yeah. feeling, this is more like a, a, a message that you're sending that has meaning, 
and and I could understand the meaning. Okay, what I what I'm trying to achieve, it's mm. a little bit different than that. Okay, even through it as a message, I think this is what you're doing is harder than actually tell a story. Understand mm. what I mean? Yeah, because I'm trying to find the stories in a in a in a in a different way. But I think mm. that you you do you agree what I'm saying? What yeah, I'm yeah, saying? definitely. Yes. So this is more like a message. I think it's harder than tell a story because you need to have a connection. You need to think fast. You need to you need to bring a meaning in the side of the message. Mm. So it's another work that's a little bit harder than tell a story. But our goal of we're gonna keep trying that because mm. I know it's gonna be when you catch that what I'm saying you're gonna you're gonna start to see this everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, bro. Uh, let's go, Minata. My father was very annoying. He used to tell me every time I bring a, a boyfriend, for instance, or somebody, a prospect boyfriend, he would tell me things about them to judge their character. And I was like very irritated with him and always thinking that, oh, why does he have to tell me, you know, what people are like? And, you know, pointing out to me that, yeah, it's nice that you have friends, you know, not respecting that I want to make these people part of my life and so on. Later on, I realized that he was so right about everything when he, in his analysis of my or analysis of my relations and that he just wanted to help me. And it was a little bit late. Uh, so the other day I had a talk with my daughter, my youngest daughter, <clears throat> and she told me that, yeah, you know, I used to be so irritated with you that you always tell me about my friends, how they are and so on she realized that I had helped her to be a better judge of her relations with people, not to let fake people into her life and not to, to be fooled by people who try to play the victim or something like that, because she is a nice and, and a friendly person who would like to help people. And I was so happy, you know, because I felt that, okay, the lesson that my father gave me, uh, it has helped me to make my youngest daughter, who is only 20, aware of these things much longer before I was aware. And I made so many mistakes. And I just hope that she will be able to avoid all those mistakes. Thanks to my father. You see, you see, there was a story. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, like uh, uh, you found something in your environment and transforming a story. And she was even using dialogues. Oh, I was talking to my father. And, and that's what we try to find. Find a story that has a point. She, I could feel you even changing your voice variation, telling your story, you know? There was a time that I was like feeling even like emotional. I could feel if you would practice more, even you, you develop your storytelling a lot. The job now is to keep looking around in your life where you find stories, okay? Let's go for Magnus. Today was... Uh... A busy day people booked the uh, meetings uh, back to back and uh, so i knew that i had this meeting but i had to go for an errand and uh, i was trying to be very productive effective so i actually i put uh, the potatoes for boiling i put the salmon in the oven and then i said okay with the mountain bike i will go quickly to industry gotan do my errand and come back i'll i'll make it and then uh, I was uh, biking along, and then I came to this crossing, uh, Freningsgatan and uh, Celsiusgatan, or Exercisgatan. And normally, I have to stand there and wait. for the. Re it's like very difficult uh, traffic lights. So I said, no, I was very inventive. I said, oh, let's go with the cars. It was green. So I went with the cars. And then I said, OK, let's get up on the bike lane. And with the mountain bike, what? So And then I saw, oh, this curb is a little bit sharp. But I went there 30 seconds ago later. Oof. <laughs> Shit, flat tire. And then I had to reflect the whole time. What did I actually do? Why did I take that? If I and I came home and the, the maybe the potatoes were a bit overboiled and the salmon was a bit. <laughs> so I think I need to uh, yeah, and I actually was, oh I felt like the wild kid, like wow da, da, with my mountain bike and but I'm sure I distracted some uh, other traffic uh, people there with this. So I said, OK, let's let's stay with the traffic rules next time. We could feel some story there, right? You're getting the point of the storytelling. 
and that's 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 the goal like we can transform our life in a storytelling speech let's say and the point here is that you start to observating those things happening in your life to transform in stories and then craft these stories so you can use the story many times craft even more with more details you know to to increase your storytelling power to use that in your speeches for example this story that you told us how this story could have something to do with uh, your 360 product I, I did it the quick and dirty way. I think it's better to like uh, the 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 best practice is to stay where you're supposed to, you know, and uh, don't do it your own. Don't wing it. Like uh, okay, I'll do it. No, there, there's a purpose to everything. Like society is constructed in certain ways. Uh, no, wait, wait, what's, what's the yeah. connection that we could find with your 360 app? Your thing. No, the same same way that there are best practices. But, that people, uh, how can you make this story? Now imagine that you're talking and using this story to say something about the app. What would mm -hmm. you connect and tell us? Mm -hmm. Rushing it uh, might not uh, be uh, the best solution. But it's better to take the time and uh, yeah. But, you got my point. You got my point, right? And mm -hmm. you guys, yeah, you I got think I, I get your point there. I would try to point. bring it for yeah. So that to make your speaking easier and more mm -hmm. cool and more uh, engaging. So what was good for you today? I uh, just realized that my father has been a really great role model for me. <laughs> That's uh, something that I sometimes I don't give him enough credit. But today I realized something when I heard your story too. So that I'm thinking that with, with me and also trying to find more stories in my <clears throat> in my everyday personally i think that you find your own purpose in others other people's stories how because mm -hmm. i draw connections from like oh yeah what daminata said connects to this and what magnus said here connects to this and what christina said here connects to this and what you said before ah it connects to this so like everything you see you see more depth in it so you can get more color on your canvas or whatever you want to say Mm -hmm. perfectly that that's that's the goal i'm happy you are mm -hmm. getting that that's the idea i'd like to be a storyteller without being dependent on really the other person drawing it out I, i'd like to be maybe representing uh, myself i want to tell a story but people usually complain that uh, my story is like too long or too irrelevant and so, but okay maybe i need to con be condensing the message and uh, i think that's really good storytelling when you are able to to condense it and have the purpose and yeah and also create a connection that's why you know i was challenging you a little bit to find a connection with what you do you know mm -hmm. like like the, the your story with your product how your mm -hmm. stories can make relevance to what you right. do mm -hmm. so you you it's more engaging that is a mm -hmm. you never tell a story just to tell a story Mm -hmm. I always tell a story, make a point. Tell a story, make a point. What do people want to gain? That's the question. What do they want to gain from the story that you're telling them? Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. fulfillment? Is it happiness? Is it connection? I mean, there's so many things that we can get out of a story. Exactly. Uh, Christina, like how important our voice is, and kind of like Aminata said also that imagine like I, I have heard so beautiful quotes from Sebastian or thoughts. Magnus, I love your story, the one you shared in the group about the grave yard, mm -hmm. for example. And the, also the way you speak now, like you're quite fun when you go in your flow. And Aminata, you have so much stories and you tell it with such a depth that I think like, wow, imagine these three people like telling this amazing story and they think maybe they get like, no, I have nothing to share. It's not so important, my voice. And and it's like see how much we here are used like being. Uh, I I feel like we are watching in a screen, but I I feel presence with my my being by being here with you because we can be in meeting and not being so much there. Mm. It's like yeah yeah this and that and like like this, but just when you are there with your whole soul. So I think that's my biggest takeaway too. 
to always try to have this confidence that our voice matters, our stories matters, and we have things to share, and it makes a difference. Cool, nice. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Magnus, you should explore a little bit more your comedy. I think you have like this easy way to to be like funny. You know, sometimes you just start talking, and I'm already laughing. You know, I don't know why. I think <laughs> you, have this, you have this. He has this. I don't know if you all feel, but he has this comedy. You know, s somewhere in your way. Yeah, uh -huh. and I think you should trust a little bit more that. I don't know how we can okay. discover that, but you you have something. Mm -hmm. So Thanks. anyway, guys. So we have an exercise, you know, and the exercise will be simple. We're gonna find a story like this. A story that we didn't thought that could be a story, you know, that happened in our life, during our week, during our uh, uh, night, day, and we're going to capture that. Fuck, this is a story, you know, and try to avoid repeating something that we already did here today, okay? So we're not going to talk about our father or things like this. We're going to try to find another kind of story, something that we felt a story, and then Try to tell that and make a point. Why are we telling that story? That's my point. Okay. So uh, it's two weeks, right? We get? Yes. Yeah. So 17 of April, Wednesday, 17. I love this exercise, you know? Like for me, I'm like, I'm a story hunter. I'm like, oh shit, it's a story. That's a story. That's a story. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for your time, for your energy, for being here. Thank you. We keep developing our public speaking. Yes.